Hi everyone. Um, we're going to continue with the um, experiments that led to the development of quantum mechanics. So you remember then the first set of videos I was talking about the black body radiation and then um, the uh, development of Planck's equation which explained that um, the idea that uh, when energy is transferred from oscillating electrons in a in a black body to light um, that's being emitted by the black body that energy has to come in certain portions certain packets or quanta um, and the equation for that is called Planck's equation which is energy is equal to uh, n uh, an integer times h Planck's constant times uh, frequency of the light that's being emitted new okay now in the second uh, se uh, experiment that we're going to talk about, it's the uh, experiment is called photoelectric effect. And as you see at the end, you get an equation which was uh, developed by uh, Albert Einstein uh, to explain the photoelectric effect. And you see that how that was uh, basically kind of a rethinking of the nature of light. So photoelectric effect, let's just kind of explain the phenomenon itself, okay? So what people found was that um, if you have a, a metal okay so for example here's a, a metal uh, being illustrated here and you shine light on the surface of that metal okay uh, depending on what kind of light you have sometimes you're able to get an electron to be ejected or you know you can kick out an electron basically from the surface of that that metal so this is a little bit of a schematic showing how that works here's the surface of the metal here remember the metal is composed of atoms uh, atoms contain electrons in them and so when you shine light this light is illustrated as a wavy line this is a common description of light because remember light is a wave um, given a certain type of frequency as we'll see in a, in a movie in a second in a uh, you know I'll show you how this works uh, you'll see that sometimes electron will be ejected off uh, and sometimes electron will not be ejected off it depends on what kind of light you have that is hitting the surface of that metal now you can detect, okay, so assume that this is the experiment, right? This is the uh, metal surface, this is the light. You can put that whole assembly inside a, uh, a compartment that looks like this, and you can detect, because if electron um, is ejected, that means there's a flow of current, there's electricity, and that electricity could be detected, for example, using a current meter or an amp meter, looking something like this. So if the needle moves to the right side that means you're able to eject electrons off if the needle stays at zero that means no electron is being ejected okay so now what I want to do is uh, play this YouTube movie uh, where this person is demonstrating and this is by the way a video from UC Berkeley it's just kinda demonstrating the photoelectric effect okay so first off there is a uh, there's a meter Okay, which measures the uh, uh, there, there's a meter which measures the current, and that meter there's a camera that's facing the meter, so you can see the projection of the meter right here. Um, so you can see that here, this is the zero, it's right here. This is maximum value of that amp meter, the current meter that I was mentioning in the previous slide. And so, if again, if, if there's a lot of uh, current, that means that a lot of electrons are being ejected, whereas if the uh, current is zero that means there's no electrons that's being ejected so what he's gonna do is he's going to shine light right now light is being shined on a on, on a metal okay and then the current is being measured by this current meter now clearly in this particular setting there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, electrons that's being ejected right so what he's gonna do is he's gonna place different filters for different colors of light okay and the idea here is to remember that colors represent uh, wavelength, but remember wavelength and frequency are inversely related. So basically, the colors of the different filters that's, that he's putting in here represents also the different frequency uh, of light. So what the filter does is it, it filters out um, and only allows certain light to pass through. Okay, so what that means is that when, when he puts a, a red filter, for example, uh, which he will do in a second what that means is only light with wavelength that's red color red or longer okay in other words lower frequency right so remember that wavelength and frequency are inversely related so if he puts red here that means only 
wavelength that's equal to red, which is about 700 nanometers or longer, 700, 800, 900, and so on, can pass through and hit the surface of the metal here. If he puts a blue filter, blue means that anything with blue or longer can um, pass through. So, okay, blue is about 400 nanometers, so 400, 500, 600, 700, all of those will be able to pass through, okay? So that's the idea of this experiment. And the idea is to show that, you know, depending on what kind of frequency of light, what kind of wavelength and, fre you know, frequency and wavelength are related, so depending on what frequency of light you put in here, uh, sometimes you'll see electrons being ejected, sometimes you don't, okay? So let's uh, go ahead with that experiment. And so the first thing he's going to do, as you can see, is a red wavelength, uh, a red uh, filter. So he's going to put that red filter right here. And so now what happens, as you can see, I'm just going to stop the video for a second here. You can see that when he put in red, then um, earlier, remember that the meter was all the way here, but now it's zero. Okay, so when he puts in red, uh, basically what that's saying is that no electron is being ejected, right, because we don't have any current. Okay, so he's going to take that out and replace it with another, so you can see it again here, that's just kind of the, the um, you know, uh, projected version of that meter, same meter here, see, now you have, now he lets all the light go through, so then you have that bunch of electrons. Now he's going to put yellow, and so you think about it, this is really a progression in the visible light uh, wavelength, right, so you get the uh, color of the rainbow, you get red, and then yellow, green, and so on. So you see that when you put, let me, let me play that again, because maybe you didn't see it too clearly here. So he's going to put yellow, and you see that it's a little bit above zero. Okay, so it's not zero anymore, so a little bit above zero, which means that there's some electrons that are being ejected right now, okay? Um, not a whole lot, but there's, there's some electrons that are being ejected, okay? Uh, now this, by the way, the current here corresponds basically to the kinetic energy of the uh, of the electron. So what that's saying is that when you when you use um, when you use uh, red light, you have no electrons. You use yellow light, now you have ele electrons being ejected, and the electrons have a certain amount of kinetic energy corresponding to that current. Okay. Okay. So let's let's change this again. And now he's going to put in a, a green one, I believe. Okay, so green. And you'll see when he puts in the green. Now, look at the current right now. It's right here. Okay, it's almost about 3 uh, milliamps, I assume is what the unit's here. But the um, you can see that here, you know, there's there's more. The electrons is now ejected off the surface of the metal and it has a higher kinetic energy than what it was before with yellow. Again, you can play back the video yourself to kind of watch this. And then now we're going to kind of continue with the last one, which uh, uh, I believe is a blue filter. Okay. So let's see what's going on here with the blue. And you can probably predict what's going to happen. You see that with blue, uh, a higher, even higher um, uh, current is observed, okay? So that, again, translates to higher kinetic energy for the electron. Now, what do I mean by, you know, the higher kinetic energy? Well, remember that, going back here, okay? Remember, the hu the whole idea of this is that you're, you, you have a light that's hitting the surface of the metal, and then if the light has this enough frequency, then the electron is ejected off the surface of that metal. And when the electron is ejected, it doesn't just stay there, right? It's, it's ejected, that means it's kind of shot off the surface of the metal, so it has a certain speed associated with it. And that speed times the mass of the electron, you know, the, is, is equal to the kinetic energy. Remember, kinetic energy is half mv squared, okay? So that's what I mean by the kinetic energy being corresponding to the, to the current that's being measured, okay? So in the next video, we're going to discuss the reasoning behind this, you know, why, um, and some of the observations that's predicted by classical mechanics versus what uh, was proposed by Einstein to be the explanation for the photoelectric effect.